Hi, Gabriel. Uh, Gotham's Geek Girl here. Um, I just wanted to say the, the movie had some really beautiful shots and like angles during a lot of the fight sequences. How did you um, go about setting the scene for like the big fight between the beekeeper and Lazarus? And how did lighting, location, and camera movement play a role in the film? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Nadia. I, basically, we need to make sure that as everything that you do with action is, is well, it's very precise, very, very precise. I mean, the choreography, the word that the, the stuntman works with the actor, in this case, Jason. Jason does his, a lot of his own stunts. So they have to be very precise because otherwise you don't, you don't sell, you don't sell the action, right? And, and 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 they try to be, they try to elevate it a lot. I mean, they want to get not only one punch to sell one punch. Sometimes they try to combine it. So the more they can combine and they can sell, they, they have the pride. They have a tremendous pride on being able to sell a tiny bit of a little bit of a longer sequence on that. So no, we have to to anchor. We have to to join into that choreography and that precision with our camera and with our lighting. So we need to be there. So for instance, in the last thing with the in the in the corridor, in the glass, in the mirror, mirror corridor, we had to really double our efforts to be able to be there with the camera in the right moments. Within the philosophy and within the concept that we already have on the film, that was not only the mechanics of the fight, but we really need to have a concept behind it. And we needed to be there, so we have to really work very close to the choreographers to be able to make sure that the camera was going to be in the right place in an environment in which we could not see the cameras and we have reflections everywhere, which was this glass corridor. So everything was work, preparation, rehearsals, and be able to understand everyone exactly what we need to do. They needed to understand the cameras. We needed to understand the choreography. And that communion allowed us to really get to where we got. Uh, but if without that communion, without that understanding, that would have been impossible. Yeah, that was going to be one of my next questions. I guess how you communicated um, with David Ayer and Eddie and like the stunts team, um, especially like if they like improvised at all. <laughs> Well, it's, it's improvisation, there are not a lot of improvisation, again, that would be very difficult for them to sell without an accident, uh, to sell something. They, they, there should be little variation sometimes, and obviously, if you have two very experienced stunt men, perhaps there could be a bit of improvisation there, but when you have the two actors, that even, even Jason, even though Jason is incredibly experienced, and Taylor too, it's difficult to completely improvise, but one way to do it, I mean, the way that David and I communicate, we have a shorthand language. Normally he likes to be very much there. Occasionally he actually grabs the camera himself, one of the cameras. Normally we shoot with two, three cameras, three, three cameras always. And in case of some fights, we put for a fourth camera. Uh, but we basically, he always checks. Uh, he's, if he's in the set with the actors and I'm sitting at the monitors, he always turns and we check and we have the shorthand language and he knows whether that was correct or not. And, uh, and with Eddie, the same. We just know we have to let him go and start with the choreography and start with everything. So then he shows us his idea of what the camera should be. Then I show them their idea or what idea, David and I, of what the camera should be doing based on our global concept of the film. And then Eddie adjusts to it. And Eddie said, okay, I get it. So now I'm gonna adjust into that, the, the action, so that the camera that you need there in order to give you that environment will help you. And, and that's the way that we, we basically, it's just a constant communication, constant dialogue going between Eddie, David and I. And you've also worked in the camera and electrical department on films like Iron Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Ragnarok. Um, have you taken any inspiration from any other films you've worked on? And can you tell us how like technology and VFX kind of comes into play um, on your filmmaking? Well, that, see, that evolution has been very important. I think again, action, action, action is a choreography. Action can have to do with a choreography. And sometimes people ask me, what would be the best film? If you had to go to, to island 
where, which film would you take? One film, normally they tell you. One film only. I normally, normally I say cabaret. I always, I always love films that are about choreography. I, that's why I go to operas. I go to, to events, to concerts, to try to understand that movement and choreography. That, that for me, that's very, very important to understand. And um, so uh, for us to, 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 to be able to tell those stories and to be able to combine the artistic values that we want to do with the fight, we need to understand a lot choreography and we need to be able to, to do it. What do I got the inspiration? I get inspiration, yes, from theater, from, 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 from opera, from ballet. And then when I bring it to the films, then you have to adapt to the conditions. Like when we did the first Iron Man, that everything was uh, um, uh, uh, blue, blue screens. Now we had the digital, the digital walls. The digital walls give us a bit more relation with the environment and allow us to tell the story a bit better and to the actors behave a tiny bit better. When you don't have that, you have to apply your imagination. Even in Black Widow, a lot of the sequences in Black Widow, they were done in different sets. They were up to four or five composites. So all we need to do is, is, is we need to make sure that we are up to date on everything. I keep saying when I do a master class to, or to a, a, a conference, is that we need to always be on top of the technology. The technology cannot tell us what to do. We need to tell the, use the technology, tell the technology how to has to be how to behave in order to do that we need to understand it and understand all the changes or everything changes at the end of the day what you're going to have you're going to have a recording instrument you're going to have an actor an actress an actor uh, performing and you're going to have an environment and you're going to have a visual idea of what you want to do and regardless of how much the technology advances that's what you're going to have as your base of your nucleus and that way you need to always understand what has changed of those factors. But the actor will always be there. There will be the human element, will be the, inter the human interpretation of a, 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 a character. So that will be one situation. And that is so random and so different and so many possib possibilities and combinations and permutations. And then you have the recording instruments. And what that recording instrument, it could be what any recording instrument at the end of the day, the most advanced camera to the most simplified version of a recording instrument. But finally, it's a recording instrument with endless possibilities to tell the story. Where you put the camera to tell that little story, that is the greatest dilemma. And this has happened since the beginning of filmmaking. Where is the perfect angle? out of any infinite amount of angles that you have. But those, those elements are always there. So as long as you are familiar with those, the improvement or the changes or the evolution of those elements, and you know that they are there and they're improving, but the, the, the essence of that will always be the same. That essence will be always the same. And that's the most beautiful thing about film. Oh, I love that you have a master class. <laughs> Um, can you tell us what you enjoy most uh, about working on action films? And I guess with this film particularly, how you kind of incorporated like the themes of the bees and hives? Well, the, to me, it's the choreography. I talk, we talk about endlessly about the choreography. That's the most important thing. You know, I don't see, I don't see it like a fight. I see it like a ballet. The coordination, this coordination, this thing between those two characters or four or five characters. The, the movement, that, that's the reason why in the film we have a lot of sequences in which we have just silhouette. We are not there on the face. We just let the silhouette play because we thought that it was beautiful just to see the whole movie, the whole balletic situation happening. And that's, that's what we like. Now, how we incorporated to the beehive, obviously David and I talk about having this fight and that choreography also explained within the colors of the film. That's the reason why you see that always that warm texture that we have from for the beehive and for the world of the normality, so to speak. And then those garish colors and those chaotic colors and those neons and things in the world of the chaos. And we have this confrontation happening. So we wanted to make sure that the metaphor about the beehive 
the shoulder of the beehive always trying to make sure that the beehive is not going to collapse because they are they, they enter into chaos. That that metaphor that we translated into the whole film was going to be explained not only at one level, but at two, three levels that we can work onto the emotional part of the audience. And that for that, we use colors and we use this confrontation of lighting that was very important for us to always have in the film. And lastly, do you have like a favorite lens or like format that you like to work with? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> recording instruments, recording instruments and everything. I mean, the story for me is the most important thing. And, uh, and 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 we, we have to shoot it. I mean, yes, sometimes you say, well, there are new, new lenses, new technology, beautiful cameras, yes. But, you know, I, I, I use them nearly all, and all of them have given me fantastic results. Do I have to choose one camera? Like, I have to choose one film? Like, I have to go to the desert island, which camera will take? Well, I mean, that would be an interesting question, but I don't want to commit. Now I'm very, very happy with the RE35 with the new RE35, because the, the color science is very interesting, because I love the texture that Ari has always made into the digital chips, uh, sensors. I love all that, and, and why not? But what Sony is doing is also phenomenal, phenomenal. And, uh, and, and, and you need to respect that that is a very healthy, wonderful competition. Now, lenses, yes, I mean, I, there was a time in which I was crazy about the 16 macro. I wanted to do a lot of things with the 16 macro, but sometimes the story has to be told. I'm not Cartier-Bresson. I'm not Cartier-Bresson that use one lens. I like to use the different lenses. What we were talking about with a different one of your colleagues that in the beekeeper, we have all these wide, wide shots, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, like in the beehive. When you see a beehive, you want to be outside, you want to see these swarming bees and the landscape and the beautiful thing happening there in the behind and people entering and coming out. But if you want to go inside the behind, you want to be very, very close. You really want to be really close. That, that medium shot doesn't make any sense. What it makes sense is the idea, the super wide, the very tight shot in that situation. So that's the reason why we gave one of our cameras a gigantic zoom lens with a very long lens, which which for an anamorphic project is like a no no. I mean, a, a classic anamorphic shooter will say no. We don't use zoom like that when you're using anamorphics. Well, we use it and we use it with tremendous success because that was the story called for it. I read that this was shot in London. We did, yeah. We shot it in London. That was, yeah. that was a surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for Boston. Yeah, we have great, uh, it really looks great. I mean, in terms of Boston, it would have to do a lot of work in order to find the proper locations and the right locations. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.